know what the word potpourri means? Yes, I bet some of you know that it means a mixture of dried spices or dried flower petals that people put in a little bowl to make a room smell nice. But it also has another meaning. Wonder if any of you know what the other meaning is? Hello everyone, I'm Kathleen Pelly. Welcome to Journey with Story. Today, I will be sharing a potpourri of poems. Now, can you guess that other meaning? Yes, it can also mean a mixture of or a selection of stories or songs or whatever. And since April is National Poetry Month, I am going to share with you a potpourri of poems. Before we begin, a big shout out to Madeline, age six, who sent me a fabulous drawing of the King Has Horse's Ears. That was episode five of our podcast. Madeline, thank you ever so much for sending this drawing, and I knew it was quite a while ago since you sent it. It kind of got lost in our folders on Instagram, but we have it now, and thank you, Madeline. Also, A huge thank you to all of our listeners in South Africa, Portugal and Namibia, where we were recently ranked number one in educational podcasts. Just another quick reminder for you to be sure and check out our special Kids Listen Mashup episode where Journey with Story is pairing up with another Kids Listen Storytelling podcast called Girl Tales. It will be episode three of their podcast season and it will air on April the 17th. In it, I will be telling you a little more about the Girl Tales podcast and why I enjoy it and think that many of our listeners from Journey with Story will also enjoy it. You'll be able to hear a little snippet from the podcast and then the host of Girl Tales will share what she enjoys about our podcast, Journey with Story. Oh, and then you can listen to both of us playing a fun storytelling game that involves using idioms. I wonder, do you know what an idiom is? I bet you do, because we use them all of the time in our everyday speech. For example, you might say, I am glad that trickster finally got a taste of his own medicine. Or you might say, wait a minute, you need to hold your horses. Anyway, it was a fun game to play and after listening, you might want to try playing it too with your family or friends. So, April the 17th, take a listen to Kids Listen Mashup Podcast Episode 3 featuring Journey with Story and Girl Tales podcast. All the details are in our episode notes. Now, let's take a journey with A Pau Pourri of Poems. The Wind and the Moon by George MacDonald. Said the wind to the moon, I will blow you out. You stare in the air like a ghost in a chair. Always looking what I'm about. I hate to be watched. I'll blow you out. The wind blew hard and out went the moon. So deep on a heap of clouds to sleep. Down lay the wind and slumbered soon, muttering low, I've done for that moon. He turned in his bed. She was there again, on high in the sky, with her one ghost eye. The moon shone white and alive and plain. Said the wind, I will blow you out again. The wind blew hard, and the moon grew dim. With my sledge and my wedge, I have knocked off her edge. If only I blow right fierce and grim, the creature will soon be dimmer than dim. He blew and he blew, and she thinned to a thread. 
One puff more's enough to blow her to snuff. One good puff more where the last was bred, and glimmer, glimmer, glum will go the thread. He blew a great blast, and the thread was gone. In the air, nowhere, was a moonbeam bare. Far off and harmless, the shy stars shone. Sure and certain, the moon was gone. The wind he took to his revels once more, on down in town, like a merry, mad clown. He leaped and hallooed with whistle and roar. What's that? The glimmering thread once more. He flew in a rage, he danced and blew, but in vain was the pain of his bursting brain. For still, the broader the moon, scrap grew. The broader he swelled, his big cheeks and blue. Slowly she grew, till she filled the night and shone on her throne in the sky alone. A matchless, wonderful, silvery light, radiant and lovely. The queen of the night, said the wind. What a marvel of power am I with my breath. Good faith, I blew her to death. First blew her away right out of the sky, then blew her in. What strength have I? But the moon, she knew nothing about the affair. For high in the sky, with her one white eye, motionless, Miles above the air, she had never heard the great wind blare. I bet that poem must have painted some great pictures in your mind. Would love to see some drawings of what you think this big bully the wind looks like, trying to blow away our lovely moon. Now, here's a poem about two very different mice called Country Mouse and City Mouse by Richard Scrafton Sharp. In a snug little cot lived a fat little mouse who enjoyed and molested the range of the house. With plain food content, she would breakfast on cheese. She dined upon bacon and supped on grey peas. A friend from the town to the cottage did stray, and he said he was come a short visit to pay. So the mouse spread her table as gay as you please, and brought the nice bacon and charming grey peas. The visitor frowned, and he thought to be witty, cried he. You must know I am come from the city, where we all to be shocked at provisions like these, for we never eat bacon and, oh, horrid grey peas. To town come with me, I'll give you a treat, some excellent food most delightful to eat. With me shall you feast just as long as you please. Come leave this fat bacon and shocking grey peas. This kind invitation she could not refuse, and the city mouse wished not a moment to lose. Reluctant, she quitted the fields and the trees, the delicious fat bacon and charming grey peas. They slyly crept under a gay parlour door, where a feast had been given the evening before, and it must be confessed they on dainties did seize far better than bacon or even grey peas. Here were custard and trifle and cheesecakes good store, nice sweet meats and jellies and twenty things more. All that art had invented the palate to please, except some fat bacon and smoking grey peas. They were nicely regaling when into the room came the dog and the cat and the maid with a broom. They jumped in a custard both up to their knees. The country mouse sighed for her bacon and peas, cried she to her friend. Oh, get me safely away! 
away, I can venture no longer in London to stay. For if oft you receive interruptions like these, give me my nice bacon and charming great peas. Your living is splendid and gay, to be sure, but the dread of disturbance you ever endure. I taste true delight in contentment and ease, and I feast on fat bacon and charming great peas. Well, what do you think? Would you rather be the city mouse and eat delicious food every day, but always have to watch out for the dangers of the cat or the dog or the broom? Or maybe you'd prefer to eat more simply, but live in peace and safety like the country mouse. This might make a good discussion with your friends or parents. Our next poem is from a wonderful Irish poet called William B. Yeats, and the poem is called the Lake Isle of Inishfree. I will arise and go now, and go to Inishfree, and a small cabin built there of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rows will I have there, a hive for the honey bee, and live alone in the bee loud glade. And I shall have some peace there, for peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the veils of the morning to where the cricket sings. There midnight's all a glimmer and noon a purple glow and evening full of the linnet's wings. I will arise and go now for always night and day. I hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore, while I stand on the roadway or on the pavement's grey, I hear it in the deep heart's core. Caterpillar by Christina Rossetti Brown and furry caterpillar in a hurry. Take your walk to the shady leaf or stalk or what not, which may be the chosen spot. No toad spy you, hovering bird of prey pass by you. Spin and a die, to live again a butterfly. Is the Moon Tired by Christina Rossetti Is the moon tired? She looks so pale within her misty veil. She scales the sky from east to west and takes no rest. Before the coming of the night, the moon shows papery white. Before the dawning of the day, she fades away. Did you have a favourite poem from this popori? Remember, you can send us your drawings on Instagram at Journey with Story or go to our website and send it to us there at www.journeywithstory.com. Cheerio then. Join me next time for Journey with Story. Music and post-production was by Colette Jonas. <laughs>